All right, so some news on XRP, what's happening in the Ripple case. We'll get into a little bit of detail there. This is kind of one of those that could be good and bad, so make sure and stay tuned for the whole video because it will break down all of that uh, in terms of how it relates to XRP. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. I want to thank our sponsor today, I Trust Capital. If you're getting into long-term investing and you think of IRAs, well, you can do that over at I Trust Capital. You can go with gold. You can go with silver or my favorite, Bitcoin, Ethereum or even going into a ton of different alternative assets in the crypto sphere. So pretty much anything you want to do, you can transfer your existing IRAs, start a new one, roll over your 401s. There's a lot of different options that you guys can take. Uh, they are going through a bit of a, a shift in some of their technology. So that is one thing that I think a lot of people have been kind of questioning. Uh, but to our knowledge, uh, everything's still cruising as planned. Make sure and use our link down below. That'll give you a $100 funding reward, uh, get you into iTrust uh, Capital. All right, so let's take a look at the first thing I want to jump on is this Bitcoin article right here. Ripple versus the SEC court update. Undisclosed meeting this week. This is uh, getting a little bit more dystopian. Let me kind of highlight this one section. A new rumor surfaced on Twitter that could imply decision in the legal battle between Ripple and SEC is near. However, since the unconfirmed rumor from an anonymous source it should be taken a grain of salt. There is a meeting going on on May 8th. The speculation is now kind of looking at, is there a settlement underway potentially playing into this? That's my question, because this is something I've often said is that the likelihood of a settlement, I think, is, is more so than any, uh, even more so than uh, a, judge, a judgment. You look at John Deaton, he had some things to say. Let's see. Uh, key considerations, including whether major crypto exchanges like Coinbase and Crap Kraken would immediately relist XRP or wait for a possible appeal by the SEC. This is the thing that I'm concerned is that if we do get some sort of judgment or, or some sort of ruling, is that the ex SEC could come in with a, an appeal. And that would definitely extend things out and creates a lot more scenarios. Uh, but he did also mention a hypothetical situation in which the SEC would agree not to an appeal if Ripple paid like a $50 million settlement and receives uh, assurance. Now, this coming from Deaton, I mean, he's done a lot of settlement deals, so you kind of know what sides are thinking. Uh, and I've been in, in cases like this where we've done deals, uh, scenarios like this with big companies that I've sat on boards with. And these are pretty, uh, pretty standard you know concessions that attorneys will do from time to time so it wouldn't put it past it to do a deal even though garlinghouse has gone on record many times of saying that he wouldn't settle maybe he will we'll see there are a couple of one things that are happening right here uh two xrp pairs were delisted from binance it was pretty basic but uh it, it they did get delisted so binance uh, you could leverage uh, on these the xrp up and the xrp down take positions those are gone uh, they did not give any specific reason for removal of uh, either of them. So does that mean anything or does it mean nothing? It could be a nothing burger. I'm always, you know, you have to put together the, the entire puzzle to really understand everything that's happening. There is a big report out from XRP. Let me go over to this report because we've marked it up pretty heavily. I want to jump to a couple of sections here. Uh, first was the volumes in XRP markets were up around 46%. That's pretty decent quarter over quarter. The other thing that they are expecting is a decision on the summary judgment in 2023. This to me is the biggest statement of the entire report is that they actually think we're going to see a judgment on 2020, in 2023, which could make that May 8th meeting a real potential settlement meeting. Maybe uh, something going on there. Uh, on-chain activity uh, remained strong this quarter. Uh, transactions increased 9% uh, versus 106 million from the previous quarter. And then NFTs continue to drive activity. Over 1 million in assets have been minted on the ledger uh, since XLS20. What I will say, and I'll show you this, uh, the receipts are in, is that this isn't necessarily a great position, I think, for NFTs. They've got a lot of work to do yet to really become a major player in the NFT space. This was the news of the quarter was that the banking crisis uh, had a negative impact on crypto liquidity, which also led to some disruption on liquidity uh, available for ODL uh, through customer flows uh, recovered quickly. Uh, remains robust, continues to serve customer flows and facilitate cross-border payments in a low-cost, timely, and reliable method. So that is a good thing, I think, overall uh, of how that's 
occurred. Some other things that were kind of interesting here is the uh, total XRP sales by Ripple net purchases were 361 million versus 226 million in the previous quarter. Okay. They've continued to sell XRP only in connection with the ODL transactions. And then uh, Ripple sourced XRP from the open market to ensure there was a sufficient plot supply. So you just have to be aware that there are some things that are happening within this chain that uh, are trying to essentially maintain a lot of the scenarios that potentially, one, keeps it healthy, but also uh, will eventually start to draw in more investors, I think. Uh, Q1 uh, 2023, 3 billion XRP were released out of SRO, 1 billion each month in line with prior quarters and official ESCO arrangements, so nothing new there. But in total, 2.1 billion XRP were returned subsequently, uh, which would put into new escrow contracts throughout the quarter. These were tokenization projects. The mainnet launch of the NFT standard, this was XLS20. This was Q4 of last year. Over 1.2 million NFTs have been minted. We showed that earlier. Making XRP Ledger among the top 10 for NFT volume and transactions. But when I say top 10, it's not like, you know, they're right there with the, the heat of what's happening on Solana. Not necessarily the case. In addition, there are now 1,500 apps and exchanges on the XRPL. 950 public projects on GitHub related to, XR, related to XRPL. All that's pretty good. I want to cut to this video because we actually had the team from XRP talking about NFTs on the show not too long ago. Let me play this clip for you right here. Is there a difference between an XRPL NFT versus, you know, a traditional NFT that's riding over on Solana or one that is even over here on Polygon or something of that nature? So devs can mint, burn, trade NFTs without any smart contract experience. So that makes it really easy for Web2 developers to just get in. And because here's what's cool, because this is encoded at the protocol level, you don't have to worry about royalties, uh, you know, respecting these kind of royalty parameters. You don't have to worry about marketplace, sorry, respecting royalty parameters because it's native. It's at the protocol level. As long as the NFT is traded on XRPL, the royalties will always be applied no matter what that user interface is. And I think that's a big (laughs) innovation. And you think about interoperability. How does XRPL play into that? And there's really three bridges currently live on that are connecting XRPL to Ethereum, you know, Avalanche, Solana, right. and a whole host of other chains. So multi-chain that's got you know billion plus TVL. You have look at Poly Network, that's another bridge, uh, and there's also All Bridge. So those are the three kind of decentralized bridges out there that are connecting XRPL today to other chains, and vice versa, connecting you know other chains to XRPL, and we're seeing value move back and forth between those chains onto XRPL and vice versa. Uh, The Flare network is another interoperability solution. Think of it almost as an IBC kind of solution where XRPL is connected to it. They're also connecting it to, you know, a whole host of other blockchains. And yes, ultimately, if I'm a business, I want my company, my application to be as widely spread and as easily connected to as many people and remove as many frictions as I can. And interoperability achieves that. The point being is is that they appear to have a lot on the game in terms of NFTs. When you look at some of the breakdowns, though, if you like, just look at a quick rundown here on Solana, quite a bit different in terms of total collections versus total minted NFTs. Then you can look over at even Bitcoin ordinals, you know, right here, 3.1 million inscriptions ordinals to date. So, and that's been a very short period of time. Just look at that run up. This is really since February to what we see right now. Big, big uh, explosion here, of course, at the uh, end of April. So with that, you, you look at where XRP is and what that might mean is maybe it's just not really in full performance of where NFTs could do. I just say, saying, and for all of you XRP lovers, haters out there, the whole point is that this really gets into, um, I think in general, that they got a lot of work to do. So just be aware of it. All right, so Labs launches a browser-based DEX accessing native XRP uh, L DEX. Um, and within that, you've got the Zoom wallet uh, within the XRP, and then right here is the DEX. So you'd be able to do this now all within um, a DEX that is pretty pretty efficient too as well. So I think this is this is a plus side for it. I don't like the fact that we haven't seen an explosion on NFTs uh, within it. So I think that's kind of the downside. Obviously, if we do get a uh, you know a hearing and or a decision. 
uh, within the case, there's a lot there that I think are also plus. All right, so the last uh, update here is their technical updates. Uh, the Ripple uh, devs uh, came in with an interoperability standard. This is XLS 38D. You can kind of read a little bit there, but it's cross-chain bridge that would enable interoperability between different blockchain networks. This was done in February. Uh, it's going to allow tokens from one blockchain to be locked into an account on a ledger, XRP ledger, while an equivalent amount of tokens are issued on another blockchain, increasing the use cases and adoption of XRP Ledger. So that's two great points. Another one would be research team also released a spec for native support of decentralized identity. This to me is a bigger deal. Uh, this is up for community review and it's called XLS 40D. So there are a lot of activity elements happening within it with the dev community. All of this still going in the right place, I think, for XRP as a whole, you know, of cross borderless payments. I think the identity element might be one that will be very interesting if they can get this one. Uh, through. Uh, anyway, as far as price, if you just look at the current, you know, it's down a bit as kind of like with Bitcoin. We had that little run right up here to almost 54 cents. And the adjustment off of that high, which was March 30th, to where we're trading right now, about a 14% drop right now on XRP, trading it at 46 cents right now. Sentiment has been trending down. Question is going to be whether or not sentiment will hold on this downtrend. Because you had that little bit of a spike back here all the way from mid-March right up here to this high in that 54 cent range. But it hasn't necessarily moved dramatic. you know. And it's much like what's happening in the market in general with both Bitcoin and Ethereum. We'll be breaking down all that for you guys a little bit later. So make sure and stay tuned there. If you are a big XRP fan, first thing you can do, smash the like button. Let us know if you like these kind of uh, breakdowns, deep dives on what's happening within the XRP community. We always love to hear it, and we always love your comments down below. If you're not in the Diamond Circle, get in. It's free, and it's easy. If you want to reach me, it's out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.